The message you're about to listen to is by Rev. Dr. Femi Olaleye of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. It's very important for every single one of us to get because it's the mind of the Lord for the house. Um, <clears throat> there are many times where you find as Christians you have um, certain dreams and certain desires and you really do not know how to bring those desires into actualization. You've prayed about it, all right, you fasted about it, but you are yet to see the manifestation of that desire, all right, on the earth. And you are wondering, how exactly can I go about this? How exactly can I go about bringing this into manifestation? Now, the Bible makes it very, very clear to us that it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the what? The issues of what? Of life. Which means that the seat of power is in your heart. The seat of ability is in your heart. If God is going to do anything in your life, on through your life, He is going to do it through the instrumentality of your heart. Now, when I'm talking about heart, your heart, I'm not talking about that pump. I'm talking about your spirit. Your spirit. Because there is an enormous power of God that has been deposited inside each and every believer. That power is vital. That power is active. That power is limitless. The Bible lets us know in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, and unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think, according to the power that worketh where? In us. So there is a power working inside you, and there is a power present inside you. Philemon chapter number 1 and verse 6, he says that the communication of your faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Every good thing by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Which means it is not enough for God to give you a good thing. There is the, your role of acknowledging that you are in possession of that good thing. You have to play that role. You have to come to that consciousness that hey, there's something I've got. The acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. That word acknowledgement there in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 is the word epignosis. Okay, it's a Greek word and we like Greek in this church. Our church is even Greek, praise God. Don't be annoyed with us. We wish the Bible was in, written originally in Yoruba. So I don't know what epignosis is in Yoruba. And I'm sure those who are Yoruba here, you know, you, you too don't know what epignosis is in Yoruba. And uh, I think Bishop Ajayi tried, I must have tried. You know, I don't know what knowledge you'll be. I don't know. I don't think you would have gotten it, but you would have tried. Praise the Lord. All right. But he says you have to come to an acknowledgement. That means that what acknowledgement, the epignosis means to come to an exact, precise, certain, conclusive understanding of the subject matter. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So, it is not what you don't have that limits you in Christ. It's what you have that you don't know how to use. We have many believers right now. They have righteousness. They don't know how to deploy it. They have holiness. They don't know how to manifest it. They have faith. They don't know how to walk in it. They have power. They don't know how to walk in it. They have the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to express Him. They have the glory of God within them. And they don't know how to manifest it. Him. So, the greatest need of the body of Christ is not glory. The greatest need of the body of Christ is not power. The greatest need of the body of Christ is not holiness. The greatest need of the body of Christ is not righteousness. The greatest need of the body of Christ is knowledge. Not head knowledge that 
puffs up. The Bible says knowledge puffs up, but love does what? Edify. Not that knowledge that puffs up where I am happy because I can say stuff. I can tell you 10 definitions of 10 stuff. No, but a knowledge that comes with know-how. I know how to manifest the glory. I know how to manifest righteousness. I know how to walk in holiness. I know how to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not shouting, I am saved, 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 whereas I am bound to addictions. I am bound to sin. I am bound to loss. I am bound to pornography. But I'm shouting, saved, saved. Yes, I'm saved from that sin. Yes, I've got the Spirit of God on my inside, but I need no how to walk in that which I have been given. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Louder, knowledge. So, you know, all through the sp- epistles, you have that cry for knowledge, that shout for knowledge. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. All right? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. All right? His son. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. That word epignosis shows up again. All right? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. All right? Epignosis. All right? Exact knowledge. A knowledge that comes with know-how. A knowledge that comes with so much light. I have no gray areas. I know what to do. Glory to God. Light! Light! It's one of the greatest needs of the body of Christ. Say, light. I have been brought out of the kingdom of darkness and I've been translated into the kingdom of light. But now I need to know how to walk in that light. Hallelujah. I need to know how to walk in that light. So that my life is not a contradiction. Where I'm shouting on the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but I am not walking in the righteousness of God in Christ. When I'm shouting that I'm holy, but I'm not walking holy. When I'm shouting that I've got power, but I'm not seeing manifestation of said power. When I'm shouting I have direction, but I'm walking in confusion. Uh Uh-uh. Light. Light. Glory to God. Say this with me. From today. Louder. Come on. From today. I walk in light. I walk in the fullness of the blessings of God that I have already received in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. To get to manifestation, you first have to start from information. You have to be informed about what is available to you in Christ. You have to be informed. Informed. That initial information is usually used in the Greek as genosko. That's information, initial revelation. The time when you get to know. All right, Genosco. All right, we're talking about you have, you are introduced to a subject matter. You are introduced to a thought. So you know. Epignosis is a higher form of knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's not what I came to talk to you about today. The reason why light is important is because you can be able to tell what is right from what is wrong when you have light. Light is an umpire. Light is a referee. It tells you what is this and what is that. You will not know what is this from, you will not be able to separate what is this from what is that if you do not have light. Light is the central rule. Light is the control. So it is impossible for you, have to have, for you to have discernment if you do not have light. There are a lot of spirits speaking right now in the world, speaking from different pulpits. Not all spirits that are granted expression from beyond the pulpit is of the Holy Spirit. And you need to be able to have discernment to tell spirits from spirits. The Bible says in First Timothy, uh, First Timothy chapter, no, First John chapter four verse one. It says, "Test all spirits and know the one that is of God." For there are many what, all right, false spirits that false prophets have gone into the world. Hallelujah! He now tells you how to test the spirit in that you are only going to be able to test the spirit and know which spirit is saying what all right by what they say so you have to test and discern spirit by what they say the content of their words the doctrine what is being said hallelujah i said hallelujah all right and there are three major test instruments to use to be able to discern all right whether something is from god and whether so what some spirit is saying is from god or not because you see we are in a generation that like razzmatazz amen you know you have to know the kind of generation you are you are in the bible says after david served god in his own generation he fell on what asleep so the generation of david was different from the generation of solomon and the generation of solomon was different from the generation of what of Rehoboam. i'll give an example what solomon was able to get away with in his generation his son Rehoboam, couldn't get away with how many of you notice that Solomon imposed great taxes on the people? They accepted it. Rehoboam came and wanted to impose taxes. They said, lie, lie. We accept it from Solomon. He's dead. 
If you try it, we will leave you. You understand? Because the generation is different. So you need to understand your generation. Our generation, this generation that we are living in, we like razzmatazz. Praise God. Even Christians, we like razzmatazz. Do you know the church you like? We like Jim Jim. You know, the lights everywhere. You know, the church, the, the choir singing, you know, a song. You know, what song did you sing? Give me one song. Um, you sing. Um, huh? We make a so you know the choir wants to come in and sing. You now you want church when them doom do doom pam. A DJ is playing doom do doom. So what's going on? Now I'm introducing the anointed dynasty. Pa 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 pa. Lights moving this way and that way and centers. That's what this generation likes. Pa pa pa. You know we make them boom boom. You know like then something flies off here and one fire lights up there and everything goes. Pra, then you know confetti is in the air. Then people bring out their phone. We gotta capture this for the gram. Man, the pictures are amazing. Man, it's amazing. Boss, we gotta we gotta capture it for the gram because this is content. That's the generation we're in. Rasmatas. So that is why the prophetic ministry is catching on in this generation. Why? Not because of the accuracy, but because of the razzmatazz. You understand? I saw one video clip of a guy, a prophet, a young guy. It's good. We thank God for him. The guy was giving a word of what knowledge, and he gave a word of knowledge. Then, he now said, oh, they call you baby, 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 in South Africa, baby. And the woman said, oh, yes, yes. The guy dropped the distance and walked out. And he walked out. Yeah, he walked out. I mean, like, Why? The generation. So you see, a generation that likes razzmatazz will be low on discernment. You understand? Because if you can package every, anything with razzmatazz, they will gulp it off. Whatever is loud and noisy has the capacity to drown your discernment. So we need light now more than ever before. We need to have all right, an understanding of what is truth and what is true so that we'll be able to separate it from what is wrong and what is false. Amen. All right. Like one, the Holy Ghost said to me one time, he said, the man who understands and knows who he is, the man who knows who is royalty, does not eat everywhere. Does not eat everywhere and does not eat anything. Because he understands where he's going. And he understands that if he's going to go far, all right, what he would eat, all right, we determine how far he goes. Elijah went on the strength of one meal, 40 days and 40 nights. So he knew that that journey was going to go on. God knew that for him to go that far, he needed a supernatural meal. So you cannot just eat anything. You cannot be a garbage bag. Garbage in, garbage out. Someone comes and tells you the mystery of the potters. You take it in. Someone talks about the mystery of the dimensions. You take it in. Seven ways to access heaven the potter. You are there. You are hearing vibration here, vibration here before you are a vibranium. And you are just taking everything. You need discernment to know what is wrong. What is right. And also what is wrong from what is almost right. To separate the wheat from the tears. Because the problem with separating the wheat from the tears is that the tears look so much like the wheat that you can mistake it for the wheat. Almost true gospel, almost right, almost sound, but not. Makes sense, but doesn't make Christ sense. Discernment, light. Discernment is impossible without light. So how do we test for spirit? Write it down. This is not my message. I will enter my message soon. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? All right. Write this down. Three ways to test. And discern spirits. <laughs> if I was the devil and I wanted to deceive Christians, there's one way I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a pastor and stand behind the pulpit. If you want to deceive Christians, you do it behind the pulpit. Best way to do it. If you want to deceive a Christian, you don't come wearing, looking like Delilah. A Christian will be able to say that's Delilah. Praise God. But if you want to deceive Christians, come through his pastor. Oh, uh, you guys are not ready for what I'm talking about here. Okay. Yeah, when you see Christian, target a prominent man of God and deceive him. If I can deceive that man of God, I can deceive everybody else. Because the deception we come to is doctrine, is teaching. And because people, all right, are, are always given to eye service, all right, and will accept anything that comes from any man as truth because that man says it, they will accept it. Praise the Lord. I say, Praise the Lord. There are Christians that believe they don't tie, they are going to hell. It's deception. 
They are Christians that believe today that trouser is not wearing trouser is what will take them to heaven and he- or take them to hell. It's deception. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody preached it. All right. Somebody preached it. Somebody taught it, and it was embraced. You understand? It's deception. If you want to deceive a Christian, do it through the pulpit, through teaching. Glory to God. So how do you are able to detect something that is from a wrong spirit? Number one. You check it through the word test. The word test. The spirit and the word always agree. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6, it says, The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of all what? Prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of what? Prophecy. So that means, if it is Jesus, all right, then it will agree with the word. Jesus in St. Luke's Gospel chapter number 20. Uh, 24 and 27, it says, In beginning and Moses and all the prophets, he began to expound unto them the things concerning what? Himself. So that means that the words of the prophets, the words of Moses, were speaking to what? To Jesus. So that means that Jesus is saying, The scriptures testify of me. Which means scripture is equal to Jesus. Which means the testimony of the prophecy all right by the spirit of god we agree with the written word if it does not agree with the written word then that means it is not the spirit of god behind it are you are you with me so far are you with me so far praise god don't be carried away if you meet a man of god and he says fine girl come here the spirit of god said that for you to find favor in your boss i have to sleep with you you don't need to be asking whether that thing is god can he be god no 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 ma listen to me ma it is not god Amen. You don't need to, you see, for you to be more asking questions, it means your level of discernment is low. Listen, there is a difference between discerning of spirits and discernment. There is a gift of designing of spirit. The gift of designing of spirit is the ability to recognize, all right, and discern spiritual personalities, whether Holy Spirit, Jesus, Spirit of Jesus, angels, and demons. That is the gift of designing of spirit. However, the gift of discernment is not really a gift per se, in that the gift of discernment is developed through understanding of the Word of God. Where you understand that this is wrong because of what the word says. But you see, the the gift of discernment develops as you know the word. So as you grow in your understanding of the word, that is how you grow in that di- in that discernment. It doesn't just fall on your head. Glory to God. So when someone says, you say, but the word says here. Someone says that, but the word says here. Are you following what I'm saying? So your understanding of the scriptures will cause there to be an increase in your capacity to discern. Amen. So that's why if you have a dream, you have to run it through discernment to know whether that dream is from God or not. The fact that you had a dream does not mean God gave you that dream. Are you with me so far? All right. So you test all spirits. Dreams can come from three levels. Dreams can come from your activities. The Bible says that a laborer, after due to much activities, dreamed many dreams. Glory to God. The book of Exodus says that. Amen? Alright? Then dreams can come from the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Then dreams can also come from what? Demonic spirit. First Chronicles 20, the Bible says, And the devil moved David to number Israel. So Satan can move people. He can influence them. So you can have a dream that is of the enemy. How will you know it's of the devil? You take it through the word test. Does it agree with the word? Hallelujah. Does it agree with the word? Does this agree with the word? You saw a dream that you died. Is there any place where the Bible says that dying young is your portion? Praise God. So why will you wake up and say, Lord, is this you? No, it's not him, sir. The word is, uh, it says, with long life will I what? Satisfy you and show you my word, salvation. Uh-huh. So you reject that dream in Jesus' name. That is not God's portion for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you with me so far? Yes. To the word. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Then the next one is through the spirit. One day, member of church. She was walking, going on outreach. And as she was on her way for the outreach, a young man met her on the road, held her by the hand, and called out her name. Called out her parents' name. Called out her, you understand? And began to prophesy to her. And he was prophesying, the guy was correct every single step of the way. 
But the lady picked it on her inside that this thing in manifestation is not the spirit of God. Second way you would be able to decipher what spirit is speaking is by the spirit test. The first test is the word test. The second test is the word, the spirit test. First John chapter 2 verse 20. It says you have an unction from the Holy One and you need not that anyone teach you. But that anointing that you have received, he itself teaches you. So, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? They are the sons of God. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. So that means there is a leading of the Spirit on our inside. The Spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, where it is such at the word inward parts of his belly. Proverbs 20, 27. So that means there is a light within us, the light of God's Spirit, that we can use to be able to tell truth from lie. In fact, this is one of the separating qualities of the Christian, in that we are able to discern. Oh boy, there was this, uh, let me tell you this story. There was this uh, time in, in, in China, it's still going on right now, where the Chinese were running underground churches. How many of you heard of the underground churches in Afghanistan? You heard of it? And that they are killing Christians, right? Good. We have to pray for the Afghani Christians. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. You know that their prayer point and the, our own is not the same right now. Uh huh. Good. So, the underground church in China in the 80s, they were meeting and they found out that because the underground churches in China, there were several of them, they were scattered in different locations. So the guy began to find out that um, the government, because the government will arrest them and throw them into um, labor camps, because in China they do not accept Christianity. Okay, they don't accept Christianity over there. And if you try to, you know, if you have gatherings that is not sanctioned by the government, then they will arrest you. So they were arresting some of these guys. So they knew that somebody amongst them was a secret police. All right, that have been infiltrated their ranks. So do you know what they did? They said, no problem. They said, the next meeting we are going to be having, that they are not going to announce it, but that it's going to be on the, uh, they are not going to announce the dates, and they are not going to announce what? The venue. Okay? That as the spirit leads, every person should come and locate where the venue was and the day of the meeting. Do you know what happened? Everybody who was a Christian found the venue except the secret police guy. Glory to God. What does that tell you? It means this. There is a spirit in man. Glory to God. That is the man in Christ. And the inspiration of God giveth him what? Understanding. The leading of the spirit is in you. The problem with many of us in this part is that because persecution, let me say it in broken or vernacular, never wire us very well. We are not pushed to use what we have. Because your internet is working and you can use Google Map. Are you following? You are not pushed to. How many of you, your Google Map did not work, then you now have to rely on, you know, the. Okay, wait. How many of you have written an exam? Of first exam, you knew that you read very well, but when you entered the exam, hall, you saw the question and said, I'm gonna die this in the room. You understand? And you now said, if, if it is not true, it is what? It is false. So, Holy Ghost, let us. How many of you did that in school? Come on, man. Oh boy, I remember one exam we wrote in 300 level med school, it was a clean path exam. There's a, there's a course called clinical pathology. I will never forget that paper all of my life. Never. Never. So this is what happened. We're reading for this exam. Read all the textbooks and read the notes and every single thing. Reading, reading hard, reading, reading. Spent all the night. If you know med school, we will read overnight for exams. We don't do that, that stuff of we've read, we will now sleep by 10. No, no, you're not a medical student. Yeah, no, no, no. Even the most brilliant of us, we will we, we be sleeping until we sleep in class. We never had the confidence to enter the exam. Hall. So we all of us read like that, and we got to the exam. Then we opened the page. You know when you enter the exam and everybody looks at the questions, they begin to laugh? You know that there's a problem. All of us will be like, hey, 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 Then we now began to, then they were, what is the matter? We said, nothing, sir. Nothing. Yeah, it's well. Is everything fine? It's fine, sir. 
We didn't know Jack. What the person did was, the person did a wicked thing. The person went to 500 level and began to ask us questions that only a 500 level person would have understood because he was talking about diagnosis. We were in 300 level. We've not yet entered clinicals. We were preclinical students. So we went into me. I went into if it is not true, it is what? Guess what? I passed the exam. Ask me how. I don't know. Don't know. Pass. Praise God. So the spirit test. Everybody say the spirit test. Tell her, I have the spirit of God. I know what to do. I know what to do. I am not confused. Exactly. The spirit of God on your inside. You know true. Tell true from false. Then the third test, all right, to know whether the spirit of God speaking and leading in a particular direction is the love test. Everybody say the love test. The Spirit of God would not lead you to do any harm to your neighbor. Your girlfriend is dating a boy. And you say the Spirit of God has revealed that that boy is your husband. And you should snatch it. Snatch him from her. You have to lambano in this kingdom. The vow then takes it by force. Praise God. So you now go, hello. How are you? How you doing? Can I see you for a bit? Yeah, I like you. And I want you to know that there's a kingdom takeover coming on. So I wanted to let you know that when he hits you, you will not be surprised. Amen? <laughs> That's not love. Love does not do or walk ill to his what? His neighbor. Glory to God. It doesn't walk ill to his neighbor. So, you don't go around converting, saying, The Lord has said, that house that you are living in is my house. No. Praise God. So, the love test. So, there are three tests. The word test, the spirit test, and the what? Love test. Alright, let's now go to where I want to teach you for the next couple of minutes. Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1, and from verse 1, can we read 1, to go. No, okay, like, loud. One to go, like a mass choir. One, two. Ah! Jesus. Uh huh. Hold on. Look at it. Number one. He says, Paul, an apostle. Paul, an apostle. There are two understandings you must have as a Christian. You have to have the understanding of Paul, and you have to have the understanding of an apostle. Paul speaks of his humanity. I'm a human being. My name is Paul. Glory to God. Then an apostle speaks of his divine side, his divinity, in talking about, because an apostle is talking about the divine call upon the human called Paul. Glory to God. So it says, Paul, an apostle of who? Of Jesus Christ. Because apostle is from the Greek apostolos, and it means sent one. So he's saying, Paul, the sent one of Jesus Christ. What do we see from that? Paul had a conviction about who he was and a conviction about his purpose, his calling, and his office. The earth would not respond to you if you are unclear who you are. The earth has not been programmed to respond to people who are confused about their identity. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23, he said, if you have faith, as a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain. So that means there is a precondition to saying, have faith. What is faith? What, what faith is pistis? It means conviction. No conviction, no response. You cannot afford to walk through life unsure and uncertain about who you are. Mm-mm, sir. Mm-mm, man. No. You won't get results that way. Conviction bets boldness. Why was it that people were shocked about Paul's boldness and shocked about Peter's boldness? Because they were not low on conviction as to who they were and who sent them. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So I praise the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Say how loud with me. I am, put your name there, a son of God. Now that say, I am, and I am a son of God. Again, I am, and I am a son of God. 
Look at something real quick. Look at Revelation chapter number one. Paul is an apostle. That's his office, ministerial office. That's the grace, the apostolic grace he stands in. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. So, you know, sometimes when I come here and say, I prophesy this, I prophesy that, I'm doing that from my office. It's from my office. Amen. From my office. And I will not be able to function properly in my office as a minister if I am not convinced of that office that I stand in. If I'm confused, if I'm uncertain, the angels will not move. The earth will not respond. Praise the Lord. Look at Revelation chapter number 1. In case you are in doubt. If you are here and you are not born again, you must understand something. That all I'm saying is for you, but you can't partake of it until you come into Christ. It is until you come into Christ that you'll be able to partake of these things. Amen? Now, look at the Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Everybody read 1 to go. Let's start from verse 5, please. Revelation 1 5. Read 1 to go. It says what? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. No, notice it says, and the prince of the what? Kings of the earth. Now notice, you would think that the kings of the earth he's talking about is Ulu of Wari or Baal of Jesha. No. He said, prince of the kings of the earth. Now, which kings is he talking about? Next verse. What does he say? Unto him, uh-huh. That loved us, uh-huh. 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 Next verse. Oh, and that made us what? Kings. And what? Priests. Unto who? He says he has made us kings and priests unto God and to his father. Now notice something. Who did he make us king and priests unto? God. The problem with many of us is this. We allow the interpretation of men to rule our lives. He did not make us kings and priests unto men. He made us kings and priests unto what? God. So, when God looks at us, he says, these are kings and these are what? Priests. Where do we need kings and priests? Do we need them in heaven? Do we need kings and priests in heaven? No, we don't. In the Old Testament, where were the priests? Were they in heaven or on the earth? Come on, talk to me. Were they in heaven or on the earth? They were on the earth. In heaven, we got one king. So, it means... Oh, glory. Turn to Ephesians 5 and verse 10. Show you something else. Hmm. Ephesians 5. 10. Everybody read what does he say? Did I say Ephesians? I'm so sorry. Revelations 5 10. I apologize. Revelations 5 and verse 10. Ooh, glory. And that made us what? No, and that made us what? Unto how I would. Are you notice? Unto God again, right? Unto God, uh huh. Kings and priests, what? And we shall what? Where? In heaven. In heaven, so the location for reigning is earth. Earth. We shall reign on the earth. Ay, 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 ay. Glory to God. So that means if there's a place for me to manifest my authority. Manifest my authority in Christ. It is where? Talk to me now. Where am I supposed to do it? On the earth. I am supposed to do it on the earth. If there is a place for me to manifest my priesthood, where am I supposed to do it? On the earth. Here. 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 Now, if God has made me a king and a priest, he expects me to function as such. He is looking to me 
looking to you to function as such. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's looking to me, he's looking to you to function as such. So it means that God is looking to me and to you to use our authority. To permit a thing and to not permit it. He's looking to me and to you to do it. Praise the Lord. He's looking to me and to you to do it. You know, recently, if you look at what was going on in Nigeria, let me tell you where everything was going. You had Boko Haram doing something in the north, right? Then you now had later on, they were doing full and men in the southwest. How many of you noticed that drama that was going on in the southwest? It was, they were trying to destabilize Nigeria. Then you had the NSAS thing that happened. So we, we, we thought it was about police. Right? Police, police. Oh, police! These policemen. <laughs> oh, but later what happened? They killed some folks at the at the toll gate. Some people say they didn't kill. I, I feel sorry for them. I'm a doctor, I know some they shot some people because my colleagues told them. Alright? Now, they did that. Next day, what happened? There was this mayhem that looked orchestrated. Right? Everybody began to run, pro and loot, 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 loot. And it was, it started in Lagos. They began to go and spread around the country. Someone said, this warehouse has stopped. Pro people go there. And we're climbing. It was as though we we're watching a zombie movie. The plan was destabilization. If that stuff had gone on, you would have had a major security issue. And the devil would have been able to capitalize what he wanted to do. But thank God some people started praying. Because it is what you allow that is allowed and what you don't allow that. So whenever there is an issue on there, do you know who God looks to? He looks to the people he gave authority to. The kings. The kings. So that's why the spirit of God used to uh, always would move you to pray. Why? You are the one that has authority. You are the one that can stop it. That thing that is going on in your family, that evil that is going on, you are the one that can stop it. The Babala what you people are going to cannot stop it. It's you. You are the one that will give the authority. Because it is only the man God gave authority to that God will listen to his voice. He gave you the authority. So it is your voice he will listen to. The king is to give instructions to his subject. The act is your subject. The priest is to direct his words to God. Because the priest's service is to what? To God. The fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of our praise, rising up in praise and worship and in agreement to what Jesus has done to God. So there is a Godward side of our ministry. Then there is a Edward side of our ministry. That's why I've told you prayer is in two folds. There is supplication. Where you are offering supplication to God. But it does not stop there. After you've offered supplication to God, you will now turn and face the earth and give proclamations. Glory to God. You command the earth to obey you. In line with what you have asked the Father for. Hallelujah. You're a king and you're a what? A priest. Grace speaks to what God has supplied in Christ. But what God has supplied in Christ will not be manifested in your life until you receive it and take it by faith. Faith. John 3, 16, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Notice that God gave. He loved, right? God loved, right? So he gave. Is that correct? Right? He gave. Correct? Now, so he gave his only begotten son. But he now says that whosoever does what? Whosoever what? Believes. So the believing is your part. The giving is his part. John 1.12. Alright. He says, but as many as what? Received him. To them he gave what? The power to become the source of God. So that means there is a part you play. What he has given you must receive. 
Are you following this so far? So if there is no response from your part, there will be no manifestation of what God has given. Hmm. People always equate grace to absence of work. I may have noticed that so. It's by grace, by grace. So they begin to think that because it is by grace, there's nothing we have to do. <laughs> Let me show you one scripture. Hallelujah. I'm about to round up because of we have a time schedule. Let me show you a scripture. Are you ready to say it? Who do we call the apostle of grace? Eh? Talk to me now. Paul, right? Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 9 into 10. The man who has received grace must labor more than every other person. That is how we know he has received grace. The grace is a grace to labor. This is why any grace that is not worked will not be manifested. You will not see the effect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God gave you grace to have financial increase, then it must mean that you, above all people, must labor more than everybody else. To make that grace even more graceful and effectual. So grace does not mean for you, it doesn't equate you being laid back and lazy. No, sir. It should be the more conscious you are of the grace of God at work in your life, the more you should walk. Because to whom much is given, more is, more is what? Well, let's look at that scripture. It, uh, it's going on. It says, for I am what? The least of the apostles. That I'm not meant to be called what? An apostle. Because I persecuted what? The church of God. Next verse, everybody read. One, two, go. It says what? I am what and what I am. And his great which was what? Bestowed was not in what? But I what? Oh, Paul, are you saying that you labored more than all the apostles combined? Hi, 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 hi. Paul was not saying I had more grace than them. What is he saying? I had more labor. I had more miles. I went to more places. I covered more grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I went more places. I covered more grounds than them. So look at it. He said, "My grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed." He's not saying I had more grace than them. No, sir. He said I walked more than them. Can you say sincerely that you outwork others at your place of work? Can you say it that you outread others? Can you say it that you out research others? Even in church here, can you say it that you out evangelize others? Be like Paul, seek to be do so, seek to out give others, seek to out evangelize others, seek to outwork others. That is the sure way for the grace that has been given to be more manifested. Any grace, ma, that is not worked will not increase. It will now look as though God gave you small grace. Not on understanding that the grace God has given you, so to speak, it mutates as you work it. As you put pressure on it, it gets bigger. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So, the mindset many people have is that because I've received grace, I lay back. Oh, I've received grace for salvation. So, I don't read my Bible as I should read it. I don't pray as I should pray. I, should not, I don't fellowship with the saints as I should fellowship with the saints. So, what normally now happens is that you now find out that the capacity to live the Christian life, you don't really have it. We are not seeing that grace manifested in all that you do. Because you are forgetting that the grace that is bestowed on you must be worked for you to even see more grace. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Turn your Bible to 2 Kings. Alright, the book of 2 Kings chapter number 6. Are you learning something here? Are you learning something here? Listen. The kind of labor you give yourself to is the kind of grace you will find yourself growing in. 
Wait, should I break that down for you? Or did you get it? If you give yourself to the giving grace, you will give more. If you give yourself to the reading grace, you read more. If you give yourself to scholarly studying the Bible, you will find out that your ability to teach the word scholarly will increase. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? If you give yourself to praying for the sick, that grace for healing, it will increase. Are you following? Whatsoever you give yourself to is the grace that will increase. If there is no labor behind the grace, there will not be explosion in manifestation. Manifestation is tied to, to, what? to labor. Because every one of us has been given grace. Should I show you? Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly. How do you, all, do you want your life to turn out? You don't have all the time to live on this earth. What kind of results do you want to get? The answer is tied to labor. The church has taught so much that you don't have to labor. And that labor is bad. That's a lie. It's a big word. Lie. Lie. Labor is critical to manifestation. Jesus said, my father walketh. And it to what? I walk. So both of them, in the God that they are walking. Why are you sleeping? God came in the flesh and walked. And labored. The word walk and labor, same thing, a gun in the Greek. is walk, labor. You want financial prosperity? You have been graced. Now go and labor. There is a mental labor part. There is a taking cost part. There is the reading part. Praise God. Praise God. You want to do well in a particular field. How much books have you read there? What research have you gone? Your YouTube is to be watching Dekule Fuji's new song. Do you know the funny thing about this? Thing? This generation likes entertainment more than education. They want to prosper by entertainment. Entertainment does not prosper. Except you are the one entertaining people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is information that prospers you. I'll give you an example. I was showing some of the friends I had. My, some of my um, this one went, to, went on outreach yesterday. I showed them my Bitcoin, my Bitcoin, my Bitcoin wallet. I said, this is how much I have made from trading in the last six weeks. And they opened their mouth. I said, how did you know where to place trade? I said, I read. Did you think someone laid down on me? Nobody laid down on me. There was no cryptocurrency anointing. I read. Praise God. I got to understand Bitcoin. I read about it. I've been studying it. I studied it for years before I put my first naira inside. But I heard that there was something called non-fungible tokens. And I read about it. What is that? Then I asked some people. They told me. And I looked at it. I said, mm, let me try. So in the beginning of the year, I put like small amount I can lose. I said, I can lose this money. So I put in there. I put it. Pah! The thing came back. I was like, what is this, man? Kalabai. Hey. Kandre Jose. You know when you make someone like that, you say, no, this one, I need to pay a tithe of it to myself. Because after all, the Bible says, and it says, you shall bring the tithe to the gate of the temple, and you shall buy whatever your soul delighted in, and thou shalt eat of it. That was what I did. Praise God. You read. You do what? You do what? You read, you research. You research. You research. That uh, Brazilian eh, to pay kosori, you are carrying a block of house on your head. Use that money. Go and research investments. Glory to God. Brother, go and use iPhone 6. Let the battery be wiring you. Instead of iPhone 12 Pro Max. You see that difference between the two of them can be what will settle you for life. Research! Labor! The way God has done it, God has opened the world up so that the economy of Nigeria should not make you poor. If the economy of Nigeria is still making you poor, you don't have enough knowledge. Do you people hear what I'm telling you now? Yeah. Shouting, worry, 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 worry. Listen to me. If your prosperity is tied to that old man there, you are in trouble. Though. Amen. Amen. You are waiting for his policies. You are waiting for that man's policy. Then the one that is coming after him. Because don't worry. You know they are going to vote somebody else again. I won't say more than that one. They will vote somebody else again. I will be wondering whether this person will live or die. You understand? It's not that person I'm going to be. My prosperity is not tied to that person. Amen. And your own too in Jesus' name. 
we are going to be flying with the wind of the Spirit. Now, why is prosperity important? Because of the gospel. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Because of what? Because of the what? Listen, my passion is gospel. If you give me one billion naira today, that money in a gospel go, it will enter. Or oh, ten million, you will come to church. If you give me ten million naira, by the time you come to church next week, this place you won't recognize it. My passion is gospel, and gospel means you people. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Listen. Can I talk to you guys? Listen. What is top of mind in the world today? Funds made it top of mind. What is the trending topic everywhere now? It's not people than Niger. If you go to Niger, you know every time you go to Niger comes out, everybody comes up with stupid revelations. One pastor came and said, hey, "Hey, I give them seven days. They did. I said, Shut up. Seven days they will die. Then that thing will happen to them. They will not die. God does not answer those kind of prayer. The show we cancel. He won't cancel. There's only thing that thing that will stop it if they don't make money." If the profit goes down, in as much as people are going to watch it, people that show is coming back this year. Oh, you think they do? It's money, money. They do profit and loss. Did we make money yet? I'm gonna make, okay, good. Then go and they come again next time. That's why Big Brother Africa is no more showing. Did he make money? And one of some of you are the ones that are helping them make money. Hey, hey, what's name? I'm serious. Pere, look at what Pere did. Look at what Woman did. Look at what Tega did. Hey, Tega, married woman. Now, wow, oh, hey, ah, hey, I can't be. They used to say men are the ones that are cheating. Now, we, look, all those data imprints you are living online is why they are going to come back next week, next year. Yes. So, what should we do? We want to get our attention? Good. We want to have a LMM. Let us make it top of mind. You need money to do that. It's, it's either we are serious about winning souls, winning souls, or we are not serious about winning souls. One time, remember, well, it's okay, good. For I remember, we are going to put it on television. Everybody's going, oh, yeah, that's what you're going to watch. We'll go to DSCV. I said, DSCV, um, do you have any special character that you can create for us? All right, so that everybody that's on DSCV can watch this program. Then say, ah, we don't know you if you church car money. How much is it? 50 million. Here's the check. Oh, we're so sorry, sir. How many days is it be programmed? Three days. What special this thing? You understand? You need money for it. The guys that sponsored, they sponsored I heard that they, they sponsored with two million dollars. Someone brought two million dollars and said, take, we want to sponsor that show. Am I going to be the mainline sponsor? We have to stop this cricket mindset when it comes to the gospel. Glory to God. We have to ensure that Satan is not the one controlling the money. That greed is not the one who controls the money. That the money is controlled by the purpose of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and what? Resurrection. So you cannot afford to waste the grace that is on you. He said, according to the grace that has been bestowed, because of the grace that has been bestowed on me, I labored more than all of them. Do you know what it means to say? He didn't say, I labored more than some. He said, you carry Peter, James, John, put all of them together. I labored more than, I outworked them. And nobody, no apostle came and said, what is he saying? What is he feeling like? Nobody contested it. Because they read Paul's letters. They read Paul's letters. No one contested it because it was true. He was not lying. He was not boasting. Because when you exaggerate, you are boasting. He was not boasting. It was true. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? Listen. Turn to Second Kings. I'll wind up. Chapter 6. Did, is anyone learning anything here? Anyone learning anything here? Brother. Sister. There are courses you can read. Eh? There is Excel you can learn. Praise God. There's SQL you can name. There's data analysis you can add. Glory to God. Okay? You say, what skills do you have? You say, I'm passionate. I, 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 I can't. No, no, those are not skills. <laughs> I'm a people person. I get along with others. Praise the Lord. It's soft skill, but you see. <laughs> and I work under pressure. 
So, you say you work under pressure. So does the tortoise. <laughs> Go and get skin. <laughs> Listen to me. Someone said, I believe it. He said, in this day and age, the ignorant man is the one who has no desire to learn. Because learning has been made so easy that for you not to have information, it is your choice. The internet has made it that way. It's just there. One time, in six weeks, I moved from someone that knew nothing about data analysis to someone that will have certification in data analysis. Six weeks. Six weeks. Labor! Research! Learn! Hmm? Second King 6, verse 1. You need to go for your MBA, go for your MBA to help you think better. Let that grace on you work well. Let it find expression. Praise God. So that when people are talking, you can talk with what they know. Then you can have the supernatural on top. Are you following what I'm saying? Learn their metrics. Learn the language and have the supernatural on top of it. Praise God. Sister, sometimes the man that you're supposed to marry, he has not shown up. Because if he shows up this way you are, he won't recognize you as his wife. He will not recognize you. He won't. Because when both of you sit down, you are talking. You understand? He's talking geopolitics, you know, geopolitics. And he's talking about how the um, rise of the Taliban, okay, in um, Afghanistan will affect the forest market. You don't even know what Taliban is. <laughs> you are thinking, are they a rap group? Oh, why see? I'm the lyrical Taliban. Oh, okay. That's what you mean. My God. Ah, you should have mentioned. Uh uh. So, so how does YC have to do it for it? What are you saying? <laughs> All this your knowledge. Now, wow. <laughs> You're just talking here, talking there. <laughs> Leave me, Joe. Let's talk. Have you eaten? Let me tell you something. He cannot recognize you. Can I recognize you? Hmm. Can I give you some more? Can I give you some more? Yeah. Alright. Wait, how many of you are... You know, I heard someone say something like that. If you hear the gospel of Christ and it leaves you wanting to go and do something, it's not the gospel of Christ. Let me tell you something. They are deceiving you. You see, there are a lot of these Christocentric people that are not thinking. You know. It's rubbish teaching. You know. What the gospel of Christ does is that when you hear it, he shows you what God has, God has done. It now points out your responsibility. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He <laughs> said, done, done, done. There's nothing for you to do. That's for your salvation in Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? But to walk in power, you will pray. So I said, no, I don't need to pray. Jesus has prayed for me. The grace prayed, so I don't pray. The grace fasted, so I don't... Hey, 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 hey. You are confused though. Because Paul said, in fasting is often. Which one is your own? You ah, in fasting is often. In prayer often. You, you say, grace prayed for you. Paul was not under... Is he not under grace? You think it's Paul Moses. Second King 6, 1. He said, and the sons of the prophet, pay attention here. He said, and the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee. Notice so, pay attention. He says, the place where we de- dwell where? With thee. Thee, if you don't know what thee is, is you with you. Okay? With you is too small for us. Praise God. So that means Elisha was in the small place with them. Glory to God. So it was not as though Elijah was visiting. They were living together. And that place was small. Yet, Elijah never brought it up to God that the place was small. Until the prophets brought it up to God. Let me tell you something. Whatever you have not made an issue to God is not an issue. Whatever you have not escalated is not... God is not mine. is not on it. Because it means you like it. It's fine by you. You are okay. Anything you don't pray about... You don't want. Any situation you don't confront, you have accepted. Hallelujah. You've accepted it. You like it. You want it. You, you live in a one-bedroom apartment. You've never talked to God about it. It means that your desire and your lot in life is one-bedroom apartment. And so shall you do it there till Jesus comes. 
I'm not cursing you. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen? Yeah. Whatever you don't talk to God, talk to God about, you are okay with it. Whatever issue on earth you don't confront in prayer, you are fine with it. When you confront it in prayer, then God says, okay, good. Look at what he says. He says, and sons of prophet said unto him, Elisha didn't have a problem with the place. He was like, I'm fine here. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee, with thee, is too straight for us. It's too small for us. Look at the next verse. And now says, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thanks, every man a beam, and let us make us a place there. Do you know the funny thing? Elisha did not show them the new location for the enlargement. The prophets knew where to go. Many of you here, you know where, you know where, you know where you should go. The desire is already inside you. Where you should be, you should be present. You is there. It's in you. If I asked you, where do you want to work? You have the place. There's a desire. Am I lying? It's there. They knew. They knew. That he didn't say where should we go. He said we, we, we are going to Jordan. We know where we are going. And notice, he says, make us a, uh, he said, give us permission to go. Then the answer was go ye. Because God's answer will always be yes. Listen, you see that big dream that you say you have, that big goal that you think is big. God's answer is yes. Go and do it. Hey, I want to start this business. I want to can I God says yes, go, go and do it. God is looking for men and women that want to prove his almightiness on the earth. They want to prove it. They are waiting for, they are men and women that are able to take that risky step on God's go. On God's command, go. It's waiting for those people. And when they, they like Peter, come and say, they're putting their leg out of the, the boat and they put their leg out. Alright? He wants to show them that he will catch them. Because Christianity is not about us reading about God doing it for Paul. It is that God did it for Paul. Therefore, he will do it for what? For me. Because the same God that was with Paul is the same God that is what? With me. So I read Paul so I can do. I read Peter so I can do. I don't read Peter so I can soliloquize and no, just blah, 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 blah. No, sir. I read them so I can replicate. Inspiration has a purpose. Replication. The reason the scriptures are there is for me to replicate what I read in there. So the faith in Christ for salvation is in the scripture. When I read it, I replicate it inside of me. Hallelujah. I replicate it in my life. I bear the same fruits. So it says, let us go, we pray thee. Unto Jonah. Look at the next verse. Then they now ask him, come with us. Now I want to show you something. And we close. And one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he said, permit us to go and expand. God said, um, Elisha said, yeah, you can expand. And he said, go with us into this expansion. And I will go. So that means presence and permission is available in God if you will only step out in faith and say, um, this place is too small for me. I want to enlarge. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord to this house. All right, today, enlarge your tent. Praise God. Enlarge it. Enlarge your tent. Lift up your eyes. You are looking too much on the ground. Lift it up. See the expanse. See, see, see beyond that company. See beyond that region. See beyond that industry. See, I've given the entire place to you. Giving it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next, next verse, and we close quickly. All right, the next verse. I'm close. Can we read in the Bible? What does it say next? Yeah, so he went to them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down what? Who did the work? Did the prophet cut down the wood? Who cut the wood? They. Uh huh. Next verse. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was what? Borrowed. Oh, master, it was borrowed. Next verse. He now says, All right. Elisha comes and says, Where did it fall? Then he had cut a piece of wood and what? All right, and put it where? All right, he said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it at And the iron did what? Swim. Now, next verse. And Elijah reached out and swam into the ocean and brought the axe head to the barn. Is that what he said? No. He says, And therefore he said, Take it upwards. There's what God will do. Then there's what, what you will do. Did you hear what I said? You are coming to church to find out what God has done. Now, you are also supposed to get instruction about what, what, what you will do. Have you learned something today? 
Are you glad you came to church today? Do you know what to do on Monday morning? I said, do you know what to do on Monday morning? Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands to us heaven and bless his name. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.